Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, we are going to go over the High Elf Lona Theral, who was a fusion event in Raid Shadow Legends in August of 2022. So we're going to take a look at the full grades of this champion, and then I will showcase him in action, some of the footage that I recorded while I was testing with him. I will let you know my thoughts on if he deserves a buff, or if he's good or bad, and all of that. We'll talk about the community perception of him. We'll talk about how to build him and do the masteries and everything you need to know surrounding Lona Theral. So let's get into it. Alrighty, now, uh, when Lona Thero came out as a fusion, um, I, I did different polling on my channel and stuff, and it was about a 75% negative reaction to him as a fusion champion. Now, I think that was a little bit of a mixed bag. I don't think it was just his kit. I think it was also to do with the fact that it was a hybrid fusion event, which is where you have to earn fragments for epic champions. Then you have to also fuse those epics into a legendary instead of just having a legendary that is a fragment summon or something like that so i think it was a little bit of both uh but the polling on my channel uh over the course of a few thousand players was showing 75 percent not really interested in fusing him and then about 25 percent uh considering to maybe go after it so that's just to give you a little bit of context on his perception in the community and now let's do a refresher course on him as a champion um the base stats are mostly what we would expect 23k HP for an HP champion is fine. The attack is completely irrelevant. 1200 defense is okay. 99 speed is fine. He gets 50 base resistance, which is nice. And then he gets 57% crit damage, which is right in the middle of the three most common values. It's typically 50, 57, or 63. You'll see a DPS champion right next to him in Roanos gets 63. And you'll see a support champion right next to him in Shiramani that gets 50. He's right in the middle at 57. And then for the A1, we have got attack one enemy, decrease the target's max HP by 30%. That's going to be great in the scarab 30 percent of damage inflicted by the way we're also going to place a shield buff equal to 10 percent of this champion's max hp on the ally with the lowest hp and it can place on himself then we get the aoe a2 that is going to also place a shield buff on all allies equal to 20 percent of this champion's max hp so both the a1 and the a2 are going to be placing shields based on his hp and not damage dealt but the second part here will buff that shield up from 20 percent to 30 percent if there are any dead allies so if you're using him to like solo the scarab or something and there's a dead ally and he ends up in a context where he's just 1v1 versus a scarab he's gonna get a 30 percent shield instead of just a 20 percent and then a super cool part about this shield is that it is protected it cannot be removed stolen or affected negatively in any way so very very sturdy and strong shield coming here on the a2 and then the a3 we're getting a crit damage buff on all allies for two turns and then we're also going to team up with them on a single enemy where they will use their default ability and flood in that will book to a four turn cooldown and then he gets an aura of 35 percent in doom tower battles and i believe he takes 10 books it's four plus four is eight and two is ten so yep okay now let's head on over to the lona Theral that i've got built and we'll talk about the gearing the stat goals the booking process the masteries and everything that goes into putting this guy together so, all right, you can see that I have got him in a regen plus immortal. Lots of HP, lots of healing, and a very sturdy, tanky champion. If you want to see the total stats, I can put the camera down right there. And there you go. There's the total stats, 235 speed with uh, 121k HP, 3k defense, and then uh, enough uh, resistance to be sturdy in PvE content right there. Then for the booking process, I can come back on camera here. Uh, like I said, 10 books. So you're going to want to get the cooldowns on the A2 and the A3. If you get lucky, good RNG, and you can save a book or two on the A1, uh, the damage does not increase the shield. So you can probably uh, go ahead and book in for eight or nine books if you get uh, a little bit of decent RNG, and you max out the A2 and the A3. For the masteries, you'd probably want more War Master if you're going to use him in PvE content, but if you're just building him as a straight-up tank, zero DPS, nothing wrong with going the defense tree as well and i can move this over if you were wanting to see the masteries that i took i was trying to build them in the most like general utility way that i could for a video but uh worth noting that you could uh go down the defense tree and there could be different ways to go about these masteries depending on how you're going to be using them and before we move on i want to i want to back up and go over the different stats on the different pieces so for the banner you're probably going to want the main stat to be hp or resistance and uh it just depends how much resistance you need for the content you are coming up against um you're going to want uh hp defense speed and resistance on this guy for the most part you don't really need to get attack or a bunch of damage doing stats i don't think he's good as like a nuker or anything uh hp on the amulet with whatever resistance we can get 
HP on the ring. And then you can go HP percent boots as long as you can get some decent speed on him. And it's all pretty self-explanatory. You're probably going to want HP uh, along the board here on the uh, on the gloves and the chest piece. The top ones are pretty self-explanatory. Again, HP, resistance, speed, defense, and, and kind of those tanky, sturdy stats. And you definitely want to remember that you do not need any accuracy on this guy. You're just wasting it if you get accuracy or attack because he does not place any debuffs or anything like that. He is just doing shields, buffing, and damage and, and ally attack and all that sort of stuff. So uh, avoid attack, accuracy, get HP, defense, resistance, and those sturdy stats. And now I want to pull up some of the footage to uh, show you and go over that I was able to gather while I was testing with him. So what this is going to show is a battle starting and what he prioritizes. You can see one second into the battle up there with no allies. He's going to do the flicker barrier, which is the A2 that attacks all enemies. And then it places shield that you can see right there based on his HP. Then I want to show what he is going to prioritize in a full team. When they're all debuffed and stuff, he's going to do the exact same thing. He's going to do the flicker barrier, attack everybody, and then place the shield. You can see going up on all of the allies with uh, tons of shielding for our team. Then if you want to see a slow-mo of what the animation looks like, this flicker barrier is the one that I got him to prioritize in almost all my testing with his AI. Boom, there's an example of that. And then this is going to be the ability that sends all of the allies teaming up with their default abilities. Now, you actually can predict this, uh, or at least the order of it, based on the um, based on the order in which you place them on the screen. So right here, you can see they've all got ally attack. I believe it's going to go like Crisk. Uh, Chris, Lydia, Kaimar, Badel. It's going to go kind of in that order based on where they're at here. So we go Chris, Lydia, Kaimar. Kaimar it hits faster because he's got that fast animation. And then Badel bringing up the rear. So uh, when people do counterattacks or ally joining stuff, it goes in the order which you place them on the building screen. It goes leader, top, bottom, top, bottom as it works its way back. And then as we move on, we've got the A1 here. This is going to be the one that attacks one enemy and decreases the max HP. So you can see, boom, right there. And the, the bar is super tiny, but it did proc that effect. And then this is the normal Scarab that we're able to blast through. And I sped this up so that it goes uh, pretty quickly. So uh, this was the normal Scarab, and then I show him after this uh, versus the hardest, uh, the hardest Scarab on at level 100. I can speed this up even a little bit here. We're blasting down the uh, the normal Scarab. Oh, I actually, I already missed it. Okay, there it is. Yep, and there we go. He, he did it in about two minutes on the hardest normal Scarab. And then this is the hard version of Scarab. He actually ends up keeping the Stagnite alive the whole time. The, the HP is trickling down, trickling down, but he does keep him alive. And uh, it takes a long time, but they do chew through the, the hard. This is the hardest Scarab you'll face. This is level 100 on hard and they were able to do it in about 10 minutes here uh my lonathero probably would have done it solo but he did happen to keep the stagnite alive as well and you can see they chew through the shield and then this is the last few seconds and boom they take down the scarab on hard and now for the fun part let's get this champion graded this is a new way that i'm trying to do it let me know if you like it don't like it or anything i can do to make it better i'm always trying to think of ways to innovate content here on the channel. And uh, I thought I'd put together a new sheet for grading the champion here in the video. This one should be a little bit easier to read than the tiny little cells on my tier list when I try to like zoom in and show that in videos. But the way I do my rankings um, are one to 12. So uh, one to 10 is gonna be your typical 10 scale. And then I have like super meta scores, like a duchess is 12 in the arena and things like that. Or if a champion is godly with like revive, like Raglan would be an 11 in faction wars or a 12 or something. And then a 10 would just be like a really good damage deal that you would want to bring. So that's typically how I go about ranking these champions. For book value, I mean, he takes, what was it? Nine or 10 books, depending on uh, how much you want to spend. And if you get lucky or not, he's probably like a six or a seven for book value. Um, we'll go there and let me shrink this a little bit so you can see that a little bit easier. And boom, okay. So uh, arena, I mean, maybe for like your third tag team arena type team or something. Um, again, it'd be like a seven, um, Hydra. He's all right. Uh, he's pretty solid in the Hydra, um, I, with the crit damage and, and joining up and stuff like that. Yeah. He's not bad. Um, demon Lord, he's not going to be good there. Um, gosh, I'd say like a four or something faction wars. He's, he's definitely really good. Uh, probably a 10, maybe even an 11. He's super sturdy and tanky. He'd be really good for the high elves. Doom Tower, um, I think I gotta at least give him a 9 because he's so good in the Scarab and can be uh, good in some of those different boss fights. Dungeons, he's mostly fine. He's just kind of a sturdy tank. Um, 
yeah i don't know if he brings any like special mechanics for like speed running him though or anything and then scarcity is something i put here at the end um just to bump up their value if they bring up something if they bring something special um he does bring uh shielding which is not super rare but kind of rare and he does uh bring a very uh stable shield because it can't be really affected like we read on the skill um, he does also bring the uh, the ally joint attack. So I think scarcity is honestly pretty cool. I'd give him an eight there on the uh, scarcity. And I just noticed that my camera was like raised up a little bit. Sorry about that. I hope that didn't look uh, terrible. Let me get that fixed. Okay. Um, so he grades out as a 7.85. Um, honestly, it's, it's not great, but it's not as bad as maybe I would have thought. I would have thought he comes out as like a 7.2, 7.4, somewhere in there. So um, really not terrible. I would like to see legendaries fall in that like eight to nine range when they're coming as a fusion. I understand a fusion probably isn't going to be Duchess or something very often, but I do like to see him in that like eight to nine range and be a little bit hyped up every now and then. So I would say he could maybe, in my opinion, use a little bit of love, but he's not some just useless trash can that's like a 6.4 or something. He is uh, decent and brings a few decent things to the game. He could definitely be a strong champion in the right team with good gear. So then is there anything that I would change about him? Um, you know, I think maybe the A1 could maybe also place a continuous heal or something instead of just a shield. Maybe that would be a little bit redundant. Maybe that'd be too much tankiness. Um, or maybe place some sort of debuff on, on the opponent or something. I think the A2 is mostly fine. It's already got a pretty cool effect of making it like uh, a, a, like uh, unaffectable. And it also gets a buff if someone's dead. And, and it's a three turn cooldown. The A2 is mostly fine. Maybe the, 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 the A3. Again, the A3 is also pretty cool. Maybe place another buff. Like place increased crit damage and uh increase attack or something um something besides the crit damage would maybe bring that into line if it's going to be a four turn cooldown ally attack i think that would uh beef that up a lot and the passive is where i think we could really do a lot more uh fun stuff i think maybe um allies under a shield buff have a bonus of 40 more resistance that'd be pretty cool you play shields on your whole team and now the whole team has 40 more resistance than they had before now all of a sudden we're talking and he'd probably just with that one change he'd probably be like an 8.3 8.4 something like that on the grading scale let me know what you think i'm just talking off the top of my head uh kind of kind of spitballing ideas here i'm fine with the aura and all that so i think maybe just a couple little tweaks would really bring him into line uh to being a lot more hyped up of a champion but he's really not that bad but let me know what you think i always enjoy reading through and evolving my opinion on new champions and hearing uh, where you agree and disagree as well so as always remember to subscribe on your way out for daily raid shadow legends content coming your way and i really appreciate you taking the time to watch have a good rest of your day peace